Hello everyone. I welcome you all in the course Mechanics of Solids and uh, we are discussing uh, module 2 Axial Force Diagram, Shear Force Diagram and Bending Moment Diagram in the Gibbs and this is lecture 6 of that particular module and uh, again we will be going for further uh, numerical related to this discussion. So in numerical 12 the statement of the numerical is analyze the cantilever beam as shown in the figure 12a and hence draw SFD and BMD and uh, the diagram for the analysis is something like this. Uh, the beam is A up to B, A is uh, fixed support, B is the uh, free support, free end and uh, at C in between A to B at 2 meter from A it is subjected to 27 kilogram point load and at D up to B uh, it is subjected to uniformly varying load. Now, up till now, whatsoever numerical we have calculated, uh, then there uh, either that uh, beam was subjected to point load or the uniformly distributed load. We have not uh, analyzed a particular uh, beam subjected uh, with uh, uniformly varying load, and that discussion we are going to uh, do in uh, this particular lecture. So, uh, again, we will not be going for calculating the reactions at the support A because uh, at B as it is free end then if we go from uh, free end uh, considering different sections in between and if we consider uh, right part of uh, that section the forces acting on right part of that section then everything is known to us. So reactions as such are not required to be calculated hence it is said that uh, develop and uh, draw the free body diagram as shown in the figure 12 B. In, in case of cantilever beam don't waste time on calculating reactions. Uh, you, you can directly uh, consider the sections from the free end. So that is what is drawn over here. So B will be origin now. The, that, that free end will be origin for all the sections. And in between B to D, it, it is subjected to uniformly varying load. So in between B to D, we need one section. From D up to C, there is no force as such. But uh, up to uh, D or beyond uh, D up to D, uh, the value of the force is changing, and uh, beyond D up to C, that uh, magnitude of total force of uniformly varying load will be same. So the value of D to C in shear force will be something else as compared to what is uh, happening in between D to D. And uh, at C there is a point load. So in between C to A again we need one more section uh, because uh, now 26 kiloton force acting at C will be there in the equation. So in all the sections either section 1, 1, 2, 2 or 3, 3 we will be considering B as the uh, origin uh, at the right part which is PA and we will be considering uh, the distance as X1, X2 or X3 depending on what your section it is. Okay. So uh, let us go for uh, calculations of uh, shear force. So uh, considering section 1 1 in uh, between points uh, B and uh, D uh, at a distance x1 from B. So this is section 1 1 and uh, from D is origin and its distance from B is x1. And uh, then limits becomes 0 to 2 meter. So because it is applicable from B up to D at B x1 becomes 0, at D x1 becomes 2 meter, so the limits are 0 to 2 meter. Okay, so we will go further while writing uh, how to go for further calculations, SF11. Now, if I am considering section 3, 3 over here and if we consider on the uh, right part what will be the total force, okay, then for one rectangle and another is triangle, okay. Or else, what you can do is you can uh, consider this as a trapezoid, and then uh, you can find what is the area of trapezoid that will be total force uh, due to uniformly varying load. So, what what is written is SF11 is uh, 2 minus x1 into 6 divided by 2. So, here this this force is 12 kiloton, and uh, this force is 18 kiloton meter. Okay. So, in between this section 11 will be having uh, the total force as uh, 2 minus x uh, into 6 uh, divided by 2. So at uh, 2 meter it is uh, 
six beyond uh, this d from d if you can consider uh, at at uh, two meter it is uh, six is the load value beyond the uh, horizontal line drawn in between from twelve kilogram meter to uh, total value. So this is six. So for two minus h one is at section one one what will be value of this triangle? So that uh, gives us uh, two minus x uh, into six divided by two. And again, plus six is there. Okay, so that is uh, one part. And twelve uh, into x one is the other part. Okay, so now with this, if we go for calculation, the shear force uh, at uh, x one is equal to zero. At at uh, b, that that gives uh, shear force is equal to zero because in all terms of this equation, x term is existing. So if we go further at uh, x1 is equal to 2 meter that is point d then shear force is 30 kilonewton with uh, substitution of uh, x1 is equal to 2 meter in sf11 equation so if we go further by considering uh, section 22 uh, two in between d to c and if we again consider the forces acting on right part of this section 22 then this total trapezoidal force is existing now okay so At the set at distance x2 from b again origin is b, so from b up to d it is 2 meter, and from d up to c it is 4 meter. So limit becomes 4 uh, 2 meter to 4 meter. Okay, so if we go for writing the equation, what it will be? Sf22 is equal to now 6 into 2 divided by 2. So this this uh, triangle. So say at d the magnitude of force is 12 kilonewton meter, and at b The magnitude of force is 18 kilonewton meter. So in between these two, the additional is 6 kilonewton meter at D, and then at D it will be zero. So triangle is uh, 2 meter by 6 meter, and area of that triangle becomes uh, this 6 into 2 divided by 2, or half into 6 into 2. So that is uh, the upper portion of this uniformly angular, and bottom portion is rectangle. So for rectangle now you are knowing that it is total 12 kilonewton meter force acting on 2 meter distance. So 12 kilonewton with 2 it, it gives 12 into 2, and this total gives us uh, shear force 22 in equation as 30 kilonewton. So if we put uh, limits as as x term is not there in the equation as of 22, then with x2 is equal to 2 meter as if is 30 kilonewton, as well as at uh, c when x2 becomes uh, 4 meter. Uh, shear force is 30 kilonewton. Further, if we consider uh, section 33, again origin is B, x3 is distance from B, B end up to section 33, and we are saying that section 33 is applicable from uh, C up to support A. So from B up to C, the distance is 4 meter, and from B up to A, the distance is 6 meter. So limits are four to six meter. Then the equation SF three three becomes now for this again six into two into two. So that 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 is half into six into two. That is the total area of this triangle at top. Okay, that is giving us total force due to that U V L and due to U V L considering rectangle remaining here at the that is twelve into two meter. So it is again as it is, and then uh, in addition to that, at uh, right of uh, section 33, this 27 kilonewton point load is existing. So that term will be added. So again, in this equation, x term is not there everywhere. So if we put the limits as x3 is equal to 4 meter at the point C from B to C, x3 becomes 4 meter. So with that, we get the shear force at C as 57 kilonewton, and then At the point A, x3 becomes uh, six meter. That is distance from B up to A. Okay, so that that gives us uh, shear force at A as 57 kilonewton. So as as the point C, if we go through SF2 equation, the value of shear force is 30 kilonewton. Whereas at the same position with uh, equation SF33 uh, at point C, the value of uh, shear force is 57 kilonewton. So from 30 up to 57, there is sudden increase, and uh, the difference between these two is 27, which is that uh, point load acting at that particular position. Okay, so this gives us uh, 
shear force diagram for uh, this particular beam. Now try to understand what is drawn over here. So from at, at B with the first equation it was 0, at B it was 30. So B is the 0, B is 30 and that was positive. Then uh, at D again it is 30 and at C it is uh, 30. So it is the uh, horizontal line and uh, in uh, this uh, equation SF22 there is no x term. So that is the horizontal line or variation is not there from G to C. At C there is sudden increase in the value of shear force from 30 to 57 due to this point line, 27 kilogram point line acting at that particular position. And again from C to A with uh, SF33 equation, in this equation also x term is not there or power of x is 0. So variation is uh, not there as such in between C to A for the shear force calculation and uh, the diagram will be horizontal straight line. But if you go through the equation SF11, now here uh, x term is there in between, I, again one more x term is there. So x into the earlier x, that, that gives x square and then it is uh, second order parabola. So variation of shear force from uh, point B up to point D which we have calculated with uh, equation written for SF11, that, that gives us variation of shear force from B to D as the second order parabola. So in, in case of uh, uniformly varying load, shear force diagram will be uh, second order parabola. In case of uh, uniformly distributed load, shear force will be inclined straight line. Okay. If we go further for uh, calculations of uh, bending moment, Again, we are considering section 1, 1 and in between points B to D. So, in between uh, point B up to point D, we are considering section 1, 1 at x1 distance from B. And if it is applicable from B to D, then uh, limits becomes 0 to 2 meter. And what equation will be? Now, now uh, the other way, in the other way, what we can do is, we can use this complete as a trapezoid. Okay. And you can find what is the area of that trapezoid and what, what is the center of that and then you can directly write down uh, the value of uh, bending moment. Okay. So if we consider uh, at x1 whatsoever is the value of uh, the uh, uvl, so that uh, value is uh, 2 minus x1 into 6 divided by 2 plus 12. So this gives you whatsoever is the ordinate of uh, shear uh, of, of force applied at section 1 1 and at uh, B we have 18 kiloton meter uh, force at such then H is x1 the distance between B up to section 1 1 that is uh, distance horizontal distance between two points of uh, that uh, trapezoid is uh, x1. So that uh, if we substitute in the equation of uh, bending moment 1 1 by considering area of that trapezoid and uh, its a centroid k. So that will be h by 3 uh, from uh, section 1 1 or else uh, from b it will be at a different distance. But if you are taking moments above section 1 1 you need to multiply area of that trapezoid with uh, distance of uh, centroid of that particular trapezoid up to section 1 1. So that is to be taken care. So that gives us uh, at point B x1 is equal to 0. So at point bending moment is 0. It is free end of uh, cantilever beam. So at, at free end of cantilever beam uh, the bending moment is always 0. So at uh, D which is x1 is equal to 2 meter bending moment is 32 kilo per meter. If we put the x is equal to 2 meter over here in the equation, then that gives us the value of bending moment at point D as uh, 32 uh, kilo newton meter. <coughs> if we consider section 2 2 in between point D and C, so what, what it was with origin B at D, the distance is 2 meter and at C the distance is 4 meter. So limits are from 2 meter to 4 meter with origin as B. Then 
So, with this, uh, if we substitute uh, those limits in uh, this particular equation, bending moment q2, then it is applicable from uh, d to c, at d uh, the limit is uh, 2 meter, uh, that, that gives bending moment at uh, d as uh, minus uh, 32 kilo newton meter. At uh, point c, then uh, at uh, x2 is equal to 4 meter, so the bending moment value is minus 92 kilo meter. Again, if we go through section 3.3, now these uh, two terms in Bm22 will be same as it is, the rest of x2 will be repeating as x3, but beyond that, 27 kilo newton point load is activated at c and the bending moment due to that at section 3.3 is required to be calculated. So, as this section 3.3 is applicable from point c up to support a, from b uh, up to c the distance is uh, 4 meter so that is uh, one of the limit and the upper limit becomes uh, from b up to a it is 6 meter so what is written is considering section 33 in between points uh, c to a at uh, distance x3 from b with origin as b and uh, limits x to 6 meter so again uh, the, these, these two terms are the same as it is in uh, whatsoever we have written uh, for bending moment 2 to equation. But uh, in addition to that, we have 27 kiloton point load and distance between that uh, point load up to section 3 will become uh, x3 minus 4. So, what, what is done is uh, from B, section 33 is at distance x3 and from B, point load 27 kiloton is at C which is at 4 meter from B. So, remaining distance between section 3 3 and uh, the position where point load is acting becomes x3 minus 4. So, 27 into x3 minus 4 gives us bending moment due to that point load at uh, section 3 3. Now, if we put limits over here at point C as x3 is equal to 4 meter, then the value of bending moment at C is again minus 92 kilo meter and at uh, point A x3 is equal to 6 meter if you substitute in the equation you get the bending moment value as uh, 206 kilo newton meter so now you can uh, draw bending moment diagram and uh, it is something like this from uh, b to d at, at b it is 0 at uh, d it is 32 kilo newton uh, meter and at c it is 92 kilo newton meter and at a it is 206 kilo newton meter and everywhere it is negative because it is a cantilever beam and the cantilever beam uh, subjected to any any kind of load, downward load, uh, it, it will be creating uh, tension at the top and compression at bottom or that kind of uh, bending is called as uh, hugging type of bending. So, everywhere the bending moment is uh, negative and in between D to C or C to A, if you go to uh, equation of section uh, bending moment 2 to and again section 3 3 bending moment 3 3, if you go through these terms, uh, there is x3 term everywhere or here x2 term everywhere, but uh, power of x over here in bending moment 2 2 equation and bending moment 3 3 equation is 1. So, from D to C and uh, C to A, uh, the variation of uh, bending moment is uh, inclined uh, straight line. However, from uh, B up to D, if we go through equation bending moment 1 1. Now, in this equation, power of x will be cubic. So, then this uh, variation from uh, B to D is uh, third order parabola. Third order parabola. Okay. So, that, that is required to be uh, considered when uh, power of x in that equation if it is q, it is cubic parallel. Okay. So, with this uh, discussion we will conclude uh, this lecture. In earlier lecture, we have discussed about uh, the relationship between uh, the force and uh, the shear force at a particular position and bending moment at a particular position and those uh, equations were uh, SF by dx is equal to W that is force and dm by dx is equal to f that is shear force and then one more equation was d 2 m by dx square is w that is uh, the load value or in case of integration also we have discussed uh, certain things. So, 
uh, according to that, what we can go for the analysis is, if you know shear force diagram, then with given shear force diagram, you can develop what is the uh, loading acting on the beam. So, load diagram can be uh, drawn or can be developed. Uh, so, with that then you can again go for finding uh, how is the bending uh, moment distribution diagram. So, that, that is uh, one numerical related to that and uh, that we will discuss in the next lecture. Uh, we will conclude this lecture up till now and uh, thank you all for the discussion. Thank you.